Thank you. Uh, it, it is truly a pleasure to be talking to all of you, uh, particularly doing an in-person presentation uh, over the, I think, the last, I don't know when I did this before. It seems like ages ago. But I, I'm actually deeply excited about being here and describing and giving you a snapshot of where we are at Swift in building a truly enterprise scale AI platform uh, for financial intelligence and other use cases. Um, part of my excitement uh, stems from the fact that Swift has a truly unique role in the industry. It is a membership driven organization funded by close to 11,000 members and it provides the common payment rails that really uh, uh, services pretty much uh, the entire world across uh, multiple currencies. And the, the richness of the data that exists on the SWIFT net network is something for any person who has done AI for a long time is deeply exciting. And over the next 25 minutes or so, I'll share with you the, who SWIFT is, I'll play a two minute video shortly. I'll give you a sense uh, together with Marius, uh, my colleague here from Red Hat, where we are in uh, uh, developing our uh, enterprise scale AI platform. And I'll end with a, a, a compelling initial use case that we've uh, started working on for anomaly detection for fraud um, and some of the exciting new directions that we're taking with uh, advanced research labs. With that, let me start by, oops. I'm sorry, I think I went to the wrong piece. So let me play this two minute video to give a sense of who Swift is. Behind every transaction is a story. Transactions that build businesses, strengthen economies, and improve lives. At Swift, we're making these transactions faster, smarter, better. Delivering new services that increase predictability and speed, reduce friction and costs, and power a more inclusive global economy. Together with our community, we are reimagining how our industry operates, capitalizing on rich data, and collaborating with the brightest minds in technology and beyond to unlock a world of new opportunities. We are transforming the Swift platform to enable instant, frictionless transactions from one account to another anywhere in the world, and give you the capabilities you need to enable bold new possibilities for your customers. Possibilities like quick and easy, low value cross-border payments for small businesses and consumers. Payment pre-validation that ensures straight through processing, end-to-end -end tracking for securities, and instant and predictive treasury services for corporates. These innovations and more will help our community thrive today and in the future especially if we develop them together and adopt them as one. That's why we're inviting you to be part of this journey and be part of shaping the future of finance. Faster, smarter, better. Faster, smarter, better. So to, to be a little more quantitative, SWIFT really does about 44.2 million messages per day. That was the peak. Actually, this year, uh, it hit 50% above that target. Close to 10 billion transactions annually. 11,000 plus financial institutions are in the SWIFT network across 200 countries. Pretty much every currency that you can think of flows over this network. And I think over the GPI, which is a global payment innovation in 2019, close to several hundreds of trillions of dollars of transactions happened that year. So this is a truly rich 
platform and a massive network of financial transactions, which, uh, if properly uh, used, can lead to an incredible reservoir of data for financial intelligence. At SWIFT, in partnership with Red Hat, my colleague standing on the stage here with me, with C3.ai, Cove, which is a specialized software-defined memory provider, and uh, other partners like Argonne National Lab, we're truly building a platform for enterprise-scale AI and its deployment. Let me turn it over to Marius to give you a little bit more detail on this platform. Thanks very much, Chalapati. And first of all, I'm excited to be here as well. Thank you for joining us. And it's my pleasure to actually speak about how we helped, worked with Swift and helped bring to life um, its vision of a platform for analyzing financial transactions and bringing value to its members. And you know, you've seen the numbers. The key target, the key goal here was to be able to tap into the transactional intelligence that's coming out of those 10 billion transactions. Um, understand, you know, as, as Chalapati will talk later, how to build a uh, fraud detection and anomaly detection solution out of that. Um, and in order to do so, you know, it was required a different kind of thinking. It was required a different type of platform. It was required a platform that had a different kind of capabilities. It had to be an extensible platform that allows multi-tenant operations, which means that it had to be able to run on any cloud, on, on a variety of types of infrastructures, wherever SWIFT members need it. It means that it had to meet the performance criteria that come with these large machine learning jobs. You know, they're large data sets, consume a lot of memory. You know, 9.5 billion, 9 billion transactions is a big number, and that's just in a year. So it had to meet this elasticity both in terms of compute and memory. And of course, it has to be a trusted computing environment. SWIFT members are financial institutions, and financial institutions are subject to very stringent regulatory requirements when it comes to their data. So the question was, how do you tap into all that data, but they retain control and they remain you know, compliant with their requirements towards their own customers? As Chalapati mentioned, this came as a collaboration between three major uh, industry uh, solution providers. Of course, Red Hat OpenShift, which is a leader in hybrid cloud-based solution, uh, solutions, Cove, which is a leader in software-defined memory. And of course, in C3, which, uh, which provided the AI platform capabilities. So, you know, uh, getting those things to work together, right, and talking a little, a little bit about, you know, what enabled this platform to function. At the heart of it, the use of OpenShift and, and Red Hat's contribution was to enable, you know, having continuization and automation at the heart of it. Containerization enabled Swift to tap into the power of bare metal deployment while retaining capabilities such as flexibility of deployment, uh, self-healing, um, um, health monitoring, and you know, seamless management of workloads and workload portability. It also means that you know, it's, it's hybrid cloud capabilities enabled to deploy this uh, you know, and, and to, to take the solution and be deployed in, you know, in the future or other types of infrastructure, public, private, uh, you know, or at the edge. And when you think about automation, automation is not automation of, of operation, it's also automation of deployment. So this is where containerization and, and automation kind of work together to, to enable this solution and enable the multi-tenancy that we're kind of talking about. And then, you know, the, the fact that OpenShift integrates seamless with, seamlessly with, with Cove, which is one of our partner, means that you know, Swift can run very large machine learning jobs and can scale both horizontally and vertically you know, while retaining all the, all the benefits of running containers and even think of you know, terabytes of memory for, for a job while still getting that flexibility without a massive investment, without incurring a massive cost in, for example, super expensive hardware. And then, you know, when you think about automation also, it doesn't stop at running things. 
automation is a key part of security. Automation means that security and privacy controls, which are a key element of the solution, are, part, uh, are embedded into the platform and make it possible for, for, the, for, uh, uh, for Swift members to actually trust this platform to their, with their data you know, while retaining the, the control and, uh, that they need. And of course, containerization and operate first principles, for example, enable a pl an AI platform like C3, for example, to run and you know, to work on, on this platform together with the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the, Swift, the, the software that Swift runs. To sum it up though, and probably that's one of the most interesting things here, is that all this working together enables a workflow, uh, a machine learning workflow, like the one at the top, that brings together all the personas that are working on the solution, that brings solutions faster from the minds of the data scientists into production. It deploys them, it facilitates their monitoring. You know? And that, you know, that kind of agility facilitates expanding this into the future, you know, from transactional intelligence to operational intelligence to customer intelligence. And I'm handed over to Chalapati to talk about where this is going from here. Thank you, Marius. So one of the key uh, design points for us to take a platform like C3.ai and containerize it on Red Hat OpenShift and add the capabilities of a software-defined memory, as Marius pointed out, for high performance, is to create a level of automation that will allow us to easily deploy this in multiple infrastructures. Swift is an on-prem deployment today. So we could take another institution, which is also on-prem, and, and this is a journey to cloud in most financial institution, and we could very simply, with a great deal of automation, deploy this infrastructure. It could be another bank or financial institution could have a private cloud installation. And similarly, we could do the same. Or we could have a lot of public information that actually impinges or has signatures relative to a particular outcome we are desiring in unstructured data from Thomson Reuters or some other place which is on public cloud. So agnostic to the type of infrastructure that, that exists, with the automation that we are providing with this containerization, this workload can easily move to any such infrastructure. Now, why is this important? There are a number of multi-bank initiatives today that are really trying to utilize the data across these financial institutions to drive highly accurate anomaly detection for fraud, et cetera. Like there's a UK tri-bank initiative, the one in the Netherlands, Japan, and the UK. These are all based on federated data architectures using, uh, intending to use things like multi-party computation and or homomorphic encryption, et cetera. Here, what this will enable is truly federated model sharing, which in, my, in our view is a highly secure and privacy-preserving way of actually deploying federation. Imagine one scenario where we would develop a highly accurate anomaly detection model on the SWIFT rich data. We move it over to a financial institution to actually specialize it, customize it on proprietary data that they are not willing to share with the rest of the community to improve the performance for themselves. Bring that capability back, again, that we can use for other institutions in an iterative fashion. TensorFlow Federated from Google has actually built a fantastic architecture to do this for all of our smartphones and have highly accurate capabilities on your respective phones. Now, we believe the platform we are building actually enables this on hybrid multi-cloud in uh, unprecedented ways. Now, another design point that I think is a big theme of this conference is ensuring that anything we build at enterprise scale is built responsibly. What does that mean? Responsible AI, in our view, has five key dimensions, right? One is clearly accuracy of prediction. It does what it's supposed to do better than rule-based systems. Second, that these results are explainable so that an institution clearly knows why a certain outcome has occurred, and what are the key drivers to drive that particular outcome. 
fairness that they, we, to the extent possible, based on the training data that we have, we're eliminating any bias in the solution and ensures appropriate level of inclusiveness. Of course, the, there's enough auditability in the system that when needed, that you, you, it has enough provenance to go back to the model, to go back to the data that was used to debug why a certain situation arose. And lastly, as Marius pointed out, these better be highly secure and privacy preserving, uh, ensuring that the data, which uh, versions of which we have to keep, has, is maintained in a highly privacy preserving way. Now, a couple of examples. So we've started, as I said, on an anomaly detection problem, which is an underpinning technology for fraud detection, institutional fraud. We call it payment controls, which is a product in SWIFT today. So here I show the richness of the data, which is really a sender, a beneficiary, and the corridor, which could have multiple hops over which this is sent. And we've taken a subset of the data, which is roughly about 200,000 uh, interactions, the large 10 senders and about 8,000 beneficiaries, and a lot of uh, triplets related to sender, beneficiary, and currency pairs. And, and uh, uh, close to 120 plus currencies represented on this. Relative to a current rule-based implementation, which is the current product today, we've done some early work on machine learning data-driven approaches to improve upon that. We are seeing with an XG boost uh, type model, close to 200% improvement on the F1 measure, which all of you know is a harmonic mean of precision and recall, and a single measure that is used to measure machine learning systems. This is just the beginning. <laughs> In partnership with uh, an advanced Department of Energy lab, Argonne National Lab, University of Chicago, which will be the home of the first two exaflop machine, Aurora. I think it'll go live sometime uh, early next year. Remember, an exaflop is a billion gigaflops. So it's a massive compute power. And some of these labs were home to the IBM fastest machine, the Summit and Sierra, which is a 200 petaflop machine earlier on. But our intent here is to really look at the richness of the data on the SWIFT network. Here we are trying to model two attributes. One, the graphical nature of the network. In this representation called temporal graphical networks, we are looking at each of the institutions as a node and the traffic between them as an edge. In addition, we actually are modeling the temporal nature of this. The beauty of this temporal graphical networks is that it can model time-varying nature of the traffic on the edges over time. And one of the things that is a key element of anomaly detection is the history of anomalies that exist and time to previous anomaly or time between the number of anomalies are significant features. In this particular formulation, without going into too much of the technical detail, there is this notion of a memory unit that has been built that allows you to actually, in an almost pseudo-Markovian way, represent long histories so that you can actually capture features like what I just described, time to the previous anomalous transactions, et cetera. Second, it, 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 there's an encoder where we're looking at what are called embeddings, both for the node and the edge, and also there's a decoder, which is a traditional multi-layer perceptron that actually then, in a supervised fashion, uh, trains for the anomalies on this network. Our early results indicate, here we have taken the area under the curve as a comprehensive measure, which is really uh, the area under the, uh, what's called the ROC curve, which measures uh, the trade-off between false positives and true positives. We are actually seeing significant improvements uh, from about 0.8 to 0.9 by varying the number of uh, embeddings and the what's called attention, the span of history that we're looking at. So what we have uh, 
described today for you is three things. One, the richness of the SWIFT network in terms of, as I said, the number of institutions that operate on this, the dollar value that flows over this network, the number of currencies, etc., and the richness of the corridors, and the potential for creating uh, high performance, highly accurate solutions for transaction intelligence like anomaly detection for fraud using an enterprise scale AI platform that we actually built with our partners, C3.ai, Red Hat OpenShift, Cove, and starting to partner with these advanced R&D labs like Argon to really create, uh, I call it anomaly detection at line speed that allows us to really attach uh, a, a risk stratification score to every transaction uh, uh, over time that can be consumed by these financial institutions. Thank you.